Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode in the Spigot series. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how to make event listeners. Okie dokie, so welcome to the first episode where we're going to start coding. So we're going to create a new Minecraft Spigot project here. So go to new project, then go down to Minecraft like we did last episode. So if you haven't seen last episode, make sure to watch that. Okay, so Minecraft Spigot plugin, click that and click next. So the group ID, me.codysimpson. And the artifact ID, you can, so this will be the project name, don't forget. So we shall call this um, event listeners. You can call it whatever you want. So next, and you can fill out this information here. So we'll say a tutorial plugin on event listeners. Great. Uh, Minecraft version 1.17. Great. You can select any of them though. For this episode, um, all of the versions will be the same. It's the same process for um, everything okay so authors website you can fill in any of that if you want to so next great and now we want to set where our project is going to live so we're going to find the folder and I'm going to select tutorials for mine and this will be in the um, event listeners folder okay so that's where our project will be so click finish click create and now this will create a new uh, spigot minecraft project template for you so you can begin making a spigot plugin Great, so let's open this up. Java, there we go. Okay, cool. So what is an event listener? That's the first question you may, you may be asking. So an event listener is simply a method of code within your plugin that is run whenever an event is triggered. So an event is something simply that happens. And this can be many things like a player dying, a player death event, a player shear event. So when you share a sheep, um, when you join the server, player join event. Um, uh, play, breaking a block, player block, wait, player block break event, block break event, something like that. Um, there's literally an event for almost everything that you can do in Minecraft, and that's the point. So what what we want to do is create a way for us to run code when those events happen, only when those events happen. So this is very very useful to game development in general, not just for Minecraft plugins. So we only want the code to run when the uh, event happens. So that's why we can listen for that event with an event listener. So first thing, I'm just going to make a output statement here. So s out tab, I'm going to say the plugin has started. So that's how we know the plugin has started. Great. And we don't even need the on disable method. If you're not going to use it, you can just remove it. So there we go. Same thing with on enable. You don't actually need it, but we will need it for this episode. So there's two different ways you can create an event listener. You can either do it within your main class here, or not the main class, but the class that has your plugin on enable and on disable methods, or you can have it within a separate class and then register it within your main plugin class. So we're going to do the simple way first, which is to create our method list or event listeners inside of the main plugin class. Okay. So to do that, we need to make sure that our plugin class here implements listener. So make sure that it's listener from org.bucket.event. So this will make this class ex um, available to have event listeners within it. Now to create a new event listener, we can use the annotation event handler and it shows up here as an auto suggestion. So event handler org.bucket.event, great. And now under that, you can create the method that is run when the event is triggered. So let's say that we wanna have an event listener for whenever the player joins the server. Okay, let's see if we can achieve that. So we're gonna do public void because it doesn't return anything on player join and then inside of here as the parameter is just going to be the event that you're listening for so in this case we want to listen for a player join event as you can see here it's auto suggesting player join event if you do control q on your keyboard um, this may be hard to read but it says called when a player joins a server it's great so whenever the player whenever a player joins the server this event listener should be triggered hopefully okay so let's finish this so player join event and then we can give it the, the parameter name, so events. Okay, so open that up, and now the code inside of here, inside of these brackets here, will be run whenever the player join event is triggered. So this will listen for that event as an event listener or event handler, however you want to call it, okay? So let's just, uh, to keep it very simple, let's just output some code. So s out, um, a player has joined the server. Great. So if this works, we should get that message whenever we join the server with our with our test account. Now, before we do this, before we run the plugin and compile it and all that stuff, we actually need to register this event listener that we have created. So don't ever forget that. A lot of people make a common mistake where they don't register the event that they just created. Um, so they have to they have to go back and do that. So 
To do that, to register your event listener, you can do git server dot get plugin manager dot register events register events and make sure it's events not event so just one event and as you can see the parameter is looking for is a listener and as you know this class happens to be a listener because it implements the listener interface so register events plural not singular and then for the first parameter since it's asking for a listener and we know that this class here is a listener that means that we can just provide this as the first parameter and then now it's asking for a plugin for the second parameter and we also know that this class extends Java plugin and Java plugin um, implements the plugin interface so we know that this class is also a plugin so we can just do this for the second parameter okay so that's how that works so if you make an event listener or an event handler however you want to call it within your main plugin class with your on enable and on disable methods you need to implement listener and also you need to do git server dot git plugin manager dot register events this comma this and that will register your events for you and sometimes you're going to hear me say events event listeners event handlers so they're all i'm going to use those all interchangeably but to be technical an event listener or an event handler is something that listens to an event and an event is just simply something that is that happens okay but it's easier to just say event so a lot of people will just say event so okay so that's how you create a very very simple event listener we're going to get more practice with this in a second so let's go ahead and just ch uh, test this out before we go further with this so to compile the plugin into a jar file, just go up here to the run button, click run, the play button here, and now it's going to compile your plugin for you. Great, it's done already. So where can we find this? Go to the side here to target, and you can find it right here. So event listeners dash 1.0 dash snapshot dash jar. So to get this, you can go to target, right click it, and do open in explorer. Great, now go into the target folder, and here you can see your event listeners dot jar file. Awesome, great. I just made it bigger for you. So we can copy this with Control Q, uh, Control C, or just right click and do copy, either one. And now we want to go to our test server that we have so that we can run this plugin and test it out. All right, so here's our test server. So let's go to plugins and just go ahead and paste this, Control V, or right click and do paste. And now we have the event listeners plugin within our plugins folder. So we can go back and run the server and see if it works or not. Okie dokie. So if we look in our um, server log here, it says event listeners, enabling event listeners, and then it says the plugin has started. Now, if you remember, if we go to our on enable method here, we did tell it to output the plugin has started when the plugin is enabled. So perfect. That's exactly what we want it to do. And also, hopefully, since this was run, it also registered our events. So let's go ahead and join the server now to see if it did work. Okay, so our test server is started up. So let's open this up here and go to direct click connect and localhost that's our uh, test server ip so join server and boom okay cool so now nothing happened in game you're not going to see anything out of the ordinary or changed but if you look in our console here it says a player has joined the server and that is not normal minecraft it wouldn't say that like that it said it would say this it would say cody cody simpson 99 logged in with identity or entity id blah 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 but this message here is directly from our plugin because if you remember in our event listener here, we told it to say a player has run the server whenever a player joins the server. So whenever a player join event is triggered, it will say this. So awesome, right? That's our first um, event and it works. Great. So that's our first event listener. And now let's see if we can make this a little more advanced. So we have this event parameter here. And we can always use this event parameter here to grab information from the event, set information for the event, do a bunch of things. So if we do event dot, you can see all of these methods here for you to do stuff on the event. So since this is a player join event, we can obviously, it would make sense for us to be able to get the player that joined the server. So if we do event, we can do event dot get player. And now it says, um, that's how you can obtain a player object of the player who joined the server. So we'll do that in a second. But also you can get the join message of, um, you know, whenever you join the server. So it'd be this right here. Cody Simpson 99 joined the game. And also, let's see what else we can do. You can get the event name, handlers. We're not going to use that ever. And, but also you have a setter method here. So we can set the join message. And that's where events get really powerful. You can customize the, the default functionality of the game. So let's say that we want to... Um, make it so that it doesn't say this whenever you join the server it says something else so we can do event dot set join message and it, if you do control p here it's asking for a string of the join message and we'll say a player welcome to the server you big dummy 
very nice, right? Very welcoming. Great. So now instead of just outputting something to the console, it should message the player um, the welcome message that we have set here. So let's go ahead and uh, recompile this and throw this into the server and see if it works. So I'm just going to stop the server here. I'm going to go back to our target folder and recopy it. Then go to our Minecraft plugins folder, our server, replace that. And then we can restart the server here. So start up at great. Okie dokie. So let's try joining now. And boom, look at that. It says, welcome to the server, you big dummy. And th isn't that awesome? That's pretty awesome if you ask me because, you know, we're very, very at the beginning of the series here, but we have done something really, really cool. And we've, we've created an event listener. So we're listening for when an event happens. And this happens to be the player join event. And then we're customizing the default functionality of the game using a plugin so that whenever a player joins the server now, it'll tell them, welcome to the server, you big dummy. So that's how you can customize a player join uh, message, by the way, in case you're curious about that. So you may be wondering, how can I see more information about this event and how it works? So you can do Control Q always to see the basic documentation of this, but the, base, the best thing that you can do is just Google this bigot Java doc. So if we open this up here, we can see I use Bing, I know, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. So you just search, Google it, or Bing it, Spigot, Java Docs, and then click the first link here. So hub.spigot.mc, blah, blah, blah. I'll leave a link for this in the description below. And so you open this up here and you can see all of the documentation for the Spigot and Bucket API. By the way, Bucket is part of Spigot, so that's why you see a lot of Bucket packages here. So you can grab any information about how Spigot works. Their, their documentation is not bad. So if, let's say that you want to see all of the different events that you can use whenever making a plugin. So if you just scroll down here, you can see event, or you can see org.bucket.entity, you can see org.bucket.entity.memory, you can see org.bucket.configuration.file, org.bucket.configuration. But if we keep going here, we can see org.bucket.event, and we can see org.bucket.event.block, org.bucket.event.enchantment. So these different uh, subtypes of events here, these sub packages, will be the different types of events that you can have within your plugin. So the first event that we saw in our plugin here that we've used already is the player join event. So this would be in the Java docs under the org.bucket.event.player package here. So if we click this, we can see a list of all of the different events that we can listen for, all of the player events that we can listen for. So if a, if a player breaks an item, if they interact with something, damage something, hold, um, holding an item, mending something, joining, kicking, level change, login, move. There's so many different events that you can listen for when you're plugging. This, this is what makes plugins very powerful on a basic level. So you can listen for all these different actions and stuff like that. So if we go back though, we can see what else we can do. Let's see, there was a block one. So there's block events. So let's click this and we can see all the different block events. Awesome, so we have block break event, block burn event, block can build event, block can cook event, all these different things. So if you want to add custom block functionality to your Minecraft server, you can listen for block events and then do stuff depending on, you know, whatever you want to do, right? Whatever you're trying to achieve. So let's say that a block is broken and then you want that block to just, you know, magically explode or like shoot out some a rocket or something like that. You can do that by listening to the block break event and then spawning a, you know, a rocket or whatever, a, a firework. So yeah, you'll learn how to do all this. Um, by the end of the series for sure. Um, really soon actually. Anyway, so that's how you, that's a basic understanding of how you can look at the Java docs just to see how you can uh, find information. You'll be using the Java docs religiously whenever making Minecraft plugins, they help you a lot. So if you're ever trying to find something, you just search it up here and it will come up. So let's say that I wanna find information on fireworks. So firework, and now you have all these different things. So you have org bucket.entity firework, bucket firework effect, all this stuff here. So. It can be a little overwhelming if you've never used Java Docs before, but as a Java developer, you should know and should get familiar with this. So this is uh, going to be your best friend whenever you're making Minecraft plugins because you can't really watch a video on how to do every single thing, right? Although I'm trying to make videos on every single thing, you cannot realistically watch a video on every single thing. You got to be able to you got to be able to do research on your own. So you got to be able to read these Java Docs and understand them to be able to make Minecraft plugins. Okay, so I'm ranting a little bit, but that's how you can look at all the different events on your Minecraft uh, that are available to your Minecraft plugin to listen to, okay? Anyway, so let's go back here and uh, let's go to, oh, actually, let me show you one more thing. So if you want to find more information on one of the events, let's go to uh, the player events real quick. 
Okay, so let's go to player bed leave event. So if we click on this, we can see all the information for the player leave event. So we have get bed, so this returns the bed block involved in this event. So they all have descriptions, the, the methods have descriptions. So is canceled, gets the cancellation state of this event. So we're gonna learn about cancellation of events next episode. Um, and then should set spawn location, get if this event should set this new spawn location for the player, set spawn location, blah, 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 right? And uh, the one that we saw a second ago is the player join event, so we can actually just search it. So player join events. And we can find informa uh, more information on how it works. So there we go. So it says called when a player joins the server. And we can see uh, get join message, gets the join message to send to all online players. Set join message, sets the join message to send to all online players. So you get the gist of it, right? You can use these Java docs to get all the information on how these events work. Okay, so I'm gonna give you one more example of how to make an event listener in your plugin. So this time, let's go to make a player leave event. So event handler, and then under that, you're gonna have your method for your event listener. So public avoid on leave bed. And by the way, as a, just as a general design pattern, you wanna name your uh, listeners like something like this. So on, and then describe what they do. So when a player joins the server, so on player join, on leave bed or on bed leave, you know, something like that. That's just a pattern that people use. Okay. So now we put inside of the parameter for this method, the uh, actual event itself that we're listening for. So player bed leave events and enter event. We have two different options here. So we're going to do player bed leave events, E or event. A lot of people just say E just for as a shorthand, it's easier to access, but uh, I'm gonna just call it event for now. Okay, so we're gonna open this up and let's see what information we can grab from this. So event dot, and we can get the bed. We saw this a second ago in the Java docs. So we can get the bed, we can uh, set the spawn location, we can do a bunch of stuff, but but let's go ahead and just get the player associated with this event. So we can do event dot get player. If we do control Q here, it tells you what it does. So it says returns the player involved in this event. And why? Because it's a player based event. It's a player bed leave event. So since the uh, get player method returns a player object, we can store that here in a player object reference. So player import player, player is equal to event dot get player. There we go. So now, that, so now that we have a player object, we can do stuff. So we can grab information, set information, all kinds of stuff. So player dot, and we can see all these different things here. We can send the player a message, we can close their inventory, get their display name, um, break a block, um, get their XP, their health. Uh, we can chat, we can uh, do so much things. We're gonna be using um, these very often, obviously, because it's a plugin, right? And players are instrumental to plugins. So we can do so much and we can set so much. Look at all these setter methods here. We can set so much about these players. So really, really powerful and really cool. So. Um, we're going to keep it simple this episode though, because it's our one of our first coding episodes. So we're going to do player dot, and we're going to send the player a message. So this is how you send a player a message. So player dot send message. And there's different, you know, there's different overloaded versions of this method here, but we're just going to use the basic one here that accepts a string. So if we do control Q, it says sends the sender a message, or AKA the player. So parameter is the message message to be displayed. So player dot send message, and we're going to say you left a bed bed not bad oops and then we're going to talk we're going to say dork so this is a very mean plugin we're going to call them a dork we're going to tell them they're a dummy very degrading but uh anyway so now we have a new event listener here so this is going to be an event event listener for when a player leaves a bed so you don't need to do anything else because we already registered the events of this class here that's what this does here so there we go, we don't have to touch anything. So let's go ahead and recompile this and test it out. Okie dokie, so the server started up here, so let's go ahead and join. Hopefully you cannot hear my spaghetti cooking in the background, that'd be unfortunate. I'm about to get some grub, boy. Okay, so we still see our welcome to the server, you big dummy message, so that's really cool. But now let's go ahead and test out our new event listener, so that'll be whenever we leave a bed. So we're gonna need a new bed. I just killed myself. Uh, so we'll do slash game mode creative. Looks like we can't do that, so we need to op ourselves. So op Cody Simpson 9 and 9. Great. There we go. So now we can get a bed for ourselves. We like red beds here in this family. Alright, cool. So we're gonna put the bed down, join it, or get in it. You can only sleep at night or during thunderstorms. Oops. Let's do time set night. There we go. Good night. 
join the bed and nothing happens nothing out of the ordinary here now if you leave it it says you left a bed dork awesome right isn't that really cool so now we're uh doing even more cool things we're listening for when a player leaves a bed and let's see if we can make this even more crazy right so let's say that when the player leaves the bed we want them to die <laughs> so we can easily do that since we have access access here to this player object we can do stuff like changing the player's health so player dot set health zero zero point zero if it's a double but it doesn't really matter of course so that'll set the player's health to zero obviously murdering them and then we can say something like um die there we go so now the player's gonna die great let's rerun this and try again all right so i almost burnt the uh, apartment down but i'm back let's go ahead and join and see uh, if this works so now if i uh, get out of this bed it should kill me and the message should be a little different let's try now boom <laughs> there we go cody sims 99 died yeah you left a bed die <laughs> awesome isn't that cool so there we go that's how we make very very basic event listeners so we can listen for events that happen within our minecraft server again events are just simply things that happen and then event listeners are just listening for those events so that we can run code or methods um, whenever the event is listened or triggered in the next episode i'm going to show you how to do event listeners outside of your main plugin class and then also i'm going to show you how to cancel the events so we're going to do something a little more advanced next episode so hopefully you're excited for that and good job if you got this done so far um, if you made it through this episode, um, I'm really proud of you. Let's keep going, keep chugging along. Um, let's become Java developers. I mean, uh, <laughs> what am I saying? Plugin developers, okay? I'm super excited for you to uh, become a plugin developer. All right, so I'm going to leave the code for this episode in the description below so you can check it out later. Come back to it if you need to uh, see anything. Like if you forget something on how events work, how to make an event listener, um, you can just come back to the uh, the code. It'll be all written up with comments and everything like that so you can uh, you don't have to rewatch the video if you don't want to. Although your views are greatly appreciated, of course. So yeah, make sure to check out that. So bookmark it for future use. And yeah, also I'll be leaving a link to our Discord server in the description below so you can check it out. And uh, you can join our server, get some new friends. You can uh, get some help on stuff that you need. If you're stuck on like how to make event listeners or for some reason your plugin doesn't work, you can join the, uh, the Discord server and join one of our help channels. You can ask for help there, okay? Or if you just if you're lonely, you need some friends. If you don't have any friends, you can join, uh, get some friends there. It's a really great program programming community with a lot of uh, people like you who like making plugins and like Minecraft and all that stuff. Okay, so join that. One final thing is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video, and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month, and you can cancel at any time. Um, you get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, including this one here. A cool rank on my Discord server so you can show everyone how swaggy you are. And also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If not, that's okay too. I'd appreciate you watching. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like if you want to see more. Subscribe and peace.